remember that. We said two o'clock. It's one two o'clock. Hey, I had a time. I know we had an appointment at two o'clock, but I'm a couple minutes early. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you know what? Like, 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 even when you when when you had that course here, like it was it was like you were punctual, you were on time, and and it shows throughout your career, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Jamie, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much. You had Thank a you. And you're a man of a word because when I asked you, will you show up? You you show up. Say yes. Say yes. <laughs> say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Did you mess? Say yes. <laughs> so, so you 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 are a professional realtor, mm -hmm. uh, very successful in in the industry and all that stuff. Uh, I've seen you work uh, throughout the years, and then all of a sudden, you shifted at one point. Mm -hmm. Why the shift? I had a feeling inside. Okay. Yeah, I had a feeling inside. It's happened a few times in my life. Sure. When I was a realtor, well, first of all, when I got into real estate, sure. And then I decided to build a team, then I decided to step into leadership, and then it was time to follow a dream. So it was that inner feeling. I think everybody has it at some point. Absolutely. And I just knew I had to follow it. Yeah. Yeah. But well, 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 when you say, look, I have to follow, like, like I know, like, you know, talking from my angle and mm -hmm. most, right, is like following a dream or a vision comes with fear. It's never the right moment. It's never the right thing to do. Not a, not enough funds, not in, like, the timing is not right. There's always something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I had confidence. Oh, so I yes. knew the time was right. I was walking away from a career, right? Like literally successful career. Very successful career, part of a, a great company, great income, but I knew I had to do it. And, and it was just one of those moments in time where I asked my wife, like, how do you feel about this? Because I, I've had a very supportive wife my entire wife, life. Yeah. Very important. Um, she yeah. was like, if you feel right, what she said to me is, are we going to be okay? Yes. And, and, and like, her concern was, are we going to be okay? Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Everything is a new gym. And, 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 and I said, 100%, we're going to be fine. She said, yeah. go for it. Cool. So having that support behind me, I just knew in spite of all the fear, I had to do this. It was just something I've lived my life this way. Right. And, and having lost everything and then rebuilding, once you've done that once, it's like, what do I have to worry about? So let's touch on that. Like, so, so, so when was that in the nineties? That was in the early nineties. So in the early nineties, you know, like, uh, around Toronto and GTA, I'm assuming yeah. you lived uh, yeah. here, right? In the city. So, so it did happen. It was a crash, correct? It was a crash, very similar to what's happening right now. It was a mo. It felt like a moment in time when the market just crashed and stopped. The phone stopped ringing. Wow. And prior to that, everything was great. Like I was like yeah. every other real estate agent, every other. top of the world. I didn't need help. It's a Ego was so big. I knew everything. And then I realized, oh man, something happened, and didn't know what it was, and and then lost everything. So when you say losing everything like you you literally lost like your assets or lost their houses or what lost their lose. we had we had seven houses we were building properties wow. um had great income back then like great income sure more money than anybody in my family had ever made right. and literally gone gone just like that well it was a slow progression over a year to nothing <laughs> wow but it when it stopped i had no idea what to do and I just basically ate away. My savings got eaten up until there was nothing left. And then my, Peter was paying Paul, boring credit card money. Oh, pay, or like we can go through this just to survive until eventually there was credit cards were maxed out. There was no income. All the RSP money was gone and the bills kept coming in and there was no option. That's well, the one. bills don't stop. Oh God. Like you never have <laughs> in any scenario because like, 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 like even looking through through your lens, I mean, like in in the uh, in the nineties, I like speaking to you. You you're like the, uh, you went through it. I mean, you're not telling somebody else's story. He went through it. And having said that, like looking at 2023, 2024, or this era where we are currently at the moment, are there any similarities? Is there like, the? It feels very similar. Feels it eh? feels very similar. And I wasn't really aware of it until the middle part of this year. Sure. When real estate agents started reaching out, people I knew that were very successful, they started reaching out and asking me for help. 
And I was curious, well, what's going on? And then realizing to the extent how much this market had shifted for real estate agents. Yeah, so 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 at the moment, currently, like for years, you have been building a successful uh, real estate coaching uh, course. Yep, real estate business coaching. When I left real estate, I stepped into this coaching world to help business owners and help them build and grow their business to the next level. I wasn't really as focused on real estate. It was almost like I had done that. Yeah, just like the page. More, yeah, go cool. somewhere else. But my network and so many years in the industry. And it was like I was being called back into it. Because you know, like, 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 I know like you feel it, it, you know what I mean? You went oh. through it, you know it, like, like, you know how from, like, when you know something inside out, it helps. But, like, we went through these past few years where any realtor would throw a business card off a balcony and they would probably catch a buyer. The market made everybody look good. Exactly. Right. Up until the interest rates started going up, you had a real estate license. You basically got in the middle of a transaction. Right. Buyers were calling you. They would show up at open houses, sign calls. So as agents, really, they were getting in the middle of the transaction and making a great lifestyle out of that. Yeah, they were catching. Carry with the beam light, you know, just put your hand by the beam light. The your salmon was full. Yeah, and you just had to catch some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but it's, it's, it's interesting now. I mean, like, like, like you said from, uh, I will like the second or the third quarter of this year, your phone has been ringing when they need help. They need like, so, um, like for the most part, a successful realtor knows how to sell clothes, knows the business and all of that stuff. Are they calling you mostly for mindset? No, or like nobody calls for mindset. Interesting. Nobody, nobody calls and says, Hey, I need a shift in mindset. We, I know that's what is needed, but they don't, word, yeah. they don't understand that that probably is the biggest opportunity because if you can shift that and fix that, the business changes. Everything else you know. The money is the reason that typically people call it. Right. The money goes away. Pain. What do I do? That's pain. the pain of finances. And, and the mindset is what comes out of the process. Wow. Like most people call me for business coaching and we end up coaching them personally. You see? They don't call as much for that. In the business world, they tend to call it because their business has shifted. They've lost business. They're seeing their revenue drop. Right. But when we work on mindset, we work on their belief systems, we work on habits, we're all habitual. 100%. We're all habitual. I look for patterns in life. My, my coaching calls today, we were talking about patterns. The patterns you noticed this year, success patterns and opportunities. What are the patterns that you notice that are keeping you stuck and allowing you to grow? And those patterns, they display everything. They show you everything in, in your life. So if we can understand, if we just reshift our thinking. And everybody knows this, but it's hard to do. Habits are hard to change, right? Like habitual patterns. <laughs> you have to break them to change them. Like you're stuck. Right? You have to become aware of them. Yeah. Like we can't change something if we're not aware of it. Yes. Right? And that's the first step. So awareness is the first step. Once we become aware, then we can look at ways to change things that we might believe to be true because what if it wasn't that way what if there was an easier way to do things yeah or 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 or, or if you have a habit that it, it is not as productive or it's wrong it's just because you learned something you could you could you, you, you you're maybe playing the song wrong all your life right yeah so and then sometimes when you hear the right tune you're like that's not correct but you're not correct <laughs> <laughs> that's right so, so, so that, 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 that also be, so now, um, you know, like, like you have seen that shift in, in, in the nineties and, and I'm sure, uh, today as, as back then, um, there are realtors, uh, and, and other businesses leaving those particular businesses and shifting maybe to, to other branches and other fields and, 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 and whatever. Right. Um, I would say that, that our, uh, business model just being 100 percent in commission and and you know once the deal goes through you kind of get paid that there's no residual going on in between and stuff like that is extremely tough right mentally tough yeah right so so did people leave the industries in in the 90s like had you seen yeah. like people just we had thirty three thousand realtors okay 1989 and the market went down for seven years and we ended up with 18,500. So from 33 to 18,005. 
So that's almost half, 40, 40%, 40, 40% of the end. 44. Wow. Right. And I think it's already happening here now. Now we have just over 73,000 on the, on the Toronto board. Mm-hmm. 45% of those agents didn't sell a house last year. Zero. Zero. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, like, like we, we, we both, we, we have seen that graph, like, you know, majority of agents sell between one to three homes. Yep. Yep. Um, I don't know now if they're part timers or full timers, which fine, it is what it is. Everybody picks their own. Do your thing. And do your thing, yeah. exactly. But uh, I mean, just just looking at that, um, it, it, it's kind of hard to believe that some people are in business and stuff like that. And I also believe that uh, there is also the danger uh, persuading something that you're not. Let's say on social media and stuff like that. Like I mean, like I mean, you have to show success, which is fine. But you don't necessarily have to buy a hundred fifty thousand dollar car to make it successful. They're on sale now. Yeah. <laughs> Take over my payment. <laughs> exactly. So that's right. insane. Yeah. Like it's, it's yeah. kind of interesting. Like how you like yeah. it's. You know, uh, I, I've seen it for years, and I don't mind. Like you, you, you want to drive a nice car, you want to dress nice. Like, but but there's a time and space, and there's like a logical, um, logical. Uh, way of of how your sphere will hire you as an agent and how like right so in desperation like you're in the industry right now sure. right you are feeling the heartbeat of, of the industry so yeah. how many people right now are feeling desperate I think I think a lot and, and I would not drop any names for my colleagues or anything like that. no I don't know just the right. industry wide like in worldwide like world that's sure uh, well, what I have seen like I have seen exactly what we touched on and it's the mindset like uh, instead of them okay being more proactive learning the new skill hiring a coach changing the mindset I don't know what they're doing. They're TikToking, they're dancing or something like, like, I don't know how much of that uh, reinsurance as a, as a consumer that brings and, and that you can see that there's really nothing behind that. Like they, they were not serious getting into this business. Yeah. They're maybe they were just like, okay, everybody is a realtor. Let me become one or whatever. So I, I, I think that was a false advertisement and then they're doing it falsely now which it's a disaster. I think a lot of people are already out of the business. They're still registered, but they're already out of the business. They're uh, looking for other jobs. I think that's why this is a great opportunity. Right now for a professional realtor, for a realtor that basically understands that they need skills, they need to develop skills. The last 10, 15, 20 years, you didn't need a whole lot of skills. If we're being really honest, yes, you didn't need a whole lot of skills. Now the skill-based agents will grab market share and they'll never give it up. Like now is the time for the professionals. So when you develop your skills, you have the right mindset, you put yourself in the right environment, the right journey, the right calling, all all that is under center. And you will excel. I really believe next year is going to the is going to be the incredible year, the biggest year for a lot of people. The opposite is also true. There's gonna be a lot of people that are unfortunately gonna have a really, really tough year next year. We have to decide where do we want to, what camp do we want to be in, right? Sure. So, so, at, and in, in, in the 90s, have you seen some of these examples? Very much so. A lot of colleagues I had in the beginning, they're gone. Like they got out of real estate, they never came back. That's what happened in the 90s. Okay. They left and they never came back. Okay. And now I think you're going to see people leave and they're not going to come back. If they, there's a lot of financial pain going on out there and I'm not oblivious to it. I understand 100%. it. Everywhere. Not only real estate, every, it doesn't matter. Every day is thrown all her. Yeah. Everybody is going through something right now because of the rates, the economy, macro events. It will get better. And I think that's another great mindset to have is sure. understand a year or two years from now, it's going to be better. So we have to get through this process. So how do we develop our skills? How do we focus on the next 90 days? That's all I'm focused on right now. I did that the last 90 and I'm focused on the next 90. That's so quarter to quarter. Like let's quarter to quarter. quarters, let's go. I have my I have my annual goals. I focus on the 90 days cuz we have to pivot. We have to be fluid, right? Makes sense. What how, what's going to happen 6 months from now when rates start to drop? The economy is going to get better. People are going to feel better. Your stocks are going to go back. Mindset. But the difference is we're letting the outside macro events control our thinking. We want to live from the inside out. We want to control our beliefs. We want to control our ability to build wealth. We want to understand what is a wealthy mindset? What's, what does that even mean? 
Because when we can understand what that is and then live and feel that and be that today, that's what actually attracts everything to you. So, so you touched on something interesting and, and uh, that's a little bit, uh, obviously mindset, but the manifestation, right? Yeah. So touch on that. I mean, like, I mean, well, we manifest our life and this is reality. Some people don't believe this. That's a whole other conversation. Sure, of course. Everything we have right now in our world is a byproduct of what we think. I believe that. Okay. So if we believe that, then we can change our thinking build a vision of our life, our future, visualize what that's going to feel like. The secret is feeling it. We don't just write goals and they don't mean anything or feel anything. We don't do vision boards and we don't feel it. The minute you start to feel that desired outcome in the future, you're literally starting to manifest that and attract that to you. Attract the right people, the right circumstances, the right events. So, so it's, it's like almost you tune to that particular channel. The movie. The movie of your mind. Yeah. We have the ability to create our movie. Okay. But what is the movie we're living? One from the past that we just keep reliving? That's not giving us the results we want? Sure. Or we start with a clean slate. Yeah, so so, so it's funny. I don't mean to cut you oh, off. Oh, like, but, but I mean, like, you know, like, like I've, uh, I've spoken to some people and they're like, oh, I want to be... Uh, wealthy. I want to have a company. I want to have... Um, thousand agents X. Okay, so mm-hmm. whatever they're trying to kind of manifest, it's like obviously ballooned to propose because we're creating our movie. Why not? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Make line, right? Yeah. But having said that, you know, so I asked them, um, let's say everything that you just said will come true. Are you ready? Because just because you're manifesting, I believe this is my personal opinion. Just because. You can see it visually. Are you ready for it? There's three things. Number one is you have to decide what you want. Got it. Then you actually have to have a deep-rooted belief that that's even possible. I don't know. That's the catch. Okay, because a lot of people will tell you things. They'll tell you the things they want. They want all this stuff. Yes. Their actions show whether they even believe that. That's where self-sabotage comes in. If we don't believe that that success is possible for us, we sabotage our own success. Yeah. But when you believe it, your actions are now going to show and reflect that belief. Towards that. They're going to be- and you have to have a deep-rooted belief irregardless of what's happening. Because you don't have it in your life yet. That's the fun part. This is the magic. This is make-believe. We're using our imagination to create a future that doesn't exist. So that's powerful, right? Paul, but this is life. This is how everything is created. How do architects build buildings? Yeah. They start with a desire of imagination. They create this and they can see it. They see, see it in mind. Or in they see it in their mind, the movie of it, right? So they see yeah. it in their mind. And then they put it on paper. Yeah. And then they take that paper and they show the client. And the client says, oh, I changed this, that, that. Next thing you know, they start to build this. But it started with a vision in somebody's mind. So if it works for designing a building, yes. it has to work for designing your life. 100%. You know what happened to me? I was coming here today. Yes. This happens all the time. And this is the third thousand bell share. Okay. I pulled around the corners right. and there's a parking spot right at the very front, the first spot. Beautiful. Everywhere I go, I find parking at the front. Nice. I went to Yorkdale shopping mall the other day. Parking right in the front. Okay, that's almost too good to be true because you cannot find parking anywhere. I find parking all the time. But it's funny you say that, you know why? Because I find parking all the time too. So you have a belief. Somewhere in you, you're gonna find a parking spot. And you know what shows that belief? Whenever I go anywhere, I go right to the front. Me too. <laughs> you, and you know why? You know why? And, 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 and that, you know, I, know, I know it's funny. I know it's funny, but this is like what I'm thinking. Yeah. So first, when I'm driving to a mall with kids, wife, family, like the whole circus is dropping <laughs> the mall, okay? So, so we're driving and I'm like, okay, the number one thing is like problem, parking, a uh, problem, there's gonna be a lot of people, noise, like all of that like stuff, right? Right. But I just cut it off. I'm like, that's not a problem because it's waiting for me. And every time I know that it's waiting for me, it's always there. Here's the third piece. Okay. Decide what you want. Okay. Believe you have a belief there's gonna be yeah, a no, 100%. Like, There's 20,000 parking spots. Somebody will come out when I come there. How many times have you pulled around the corner and somebody's backing out? You pull it. 
or you turn the corner and here's the spot. Like here, there was a spot out front, the first spot. And everybody's looking for out parking. And they're driving over here. Yeah. The third piece is expectancy. You have to expect that that spot's gonna be waiting for you. So you have to decide that's what you want. You have to believe that's gonna happen and then you have to expect it. And you know where else, where else it was happening? And, and I loved in-person um, bidding wars. Like, you know, when we went in yeah. person, we were yeah. bringing like our- Old our school. School. <laughs> Oh, I loved it, okay? So, but every time I would drive, you know, it's, it's you know, you know like you had your clients, they want the house, obviously they don't yeah. want to pay for the house. Okay? <laughs> and they're like, I, as, as I'm driving, you know, the office they used to call before or whatever, or you show up and there's like 15 offers or 12 offers, whatever. But I, I always believed I'm going to get it. I know this is what my clients, exactly what they want. We, we, we finally found it. And at everything else, I didn't care about. Like there were some big sharks in, in the room, right? But I don't care. Like, you know, like I went in there and I made sure that I satisfied that particular agreement with both parties. Mm -hmm. That was my job. I didn't like parking and get this right. Uh, that doesn't matter. Who cares? Right. Who cares? Yep. Let me just yep. do this, right? Yep. So I, I think that's exactly what, uh, whether it helped or not, I don't know. I can so, guarantee it helped. Right. Does it happen a hundred percent every single time? Oh, of course. I mean, like it doesn't, it cannot happen. But if I want to give myself an edge, I got to have that belief. Yeah. And then we build in that expectancy. That's the magic. Yes. And this, if it happens for building a house, if it happens for a parking spot, if it happens in a multiple offer, it can happen for our life. But we weren't taught this. I was never taught this. We were not taught this. And, and, and I think like as, as we're progressing further, like, you know, like in the last 10, 15 years, you know, you heard maybe sometimes a word of manifestation mindset maybe a little bit more uh, about learning that you know next level of yep. approach yep. and maybe it was like left somewhere for the elites that the, everybody else secret. yeah secret yeah i mean everybody <laughs> else thought everybody else thought that they were crazy yeah you know because that's that's how they were behaving but now i think we we unlocked that you know chamber where we're like okay there's more to it and um all of us on, on, on a scale, like, like on a larger scale, we actually feel it. You know, some of us like you get into that, that actually can bring the knowledge to someone else. Very tough. It's not easy. It's an opportunity though, know, right? Right. See, I, where did we learn all our, everything we know in life? Where did we learn it from? Our parents? Yes. School, pro culture, environment, okay. programming. So all this is embedded on us as a little, as a little kid. Sure. And then we grow up in that space, right? So to think different, you have to really have a strong inner fortitude to even sure. be open to thinking different. Small percent. So if that is there and there's a reason when I lost everything, caused a shift in my oh. deep rooted psyche that, okay, this doesn't work. I got to learn from this. Yeah, yeah, but getting up from that, like you said, you mentioned you had seven houses. And I was in my mid-20s. So when I think back, I was on the top of the world. I'm sure. And to lose it all, I was so grateful not to have gone through the experience at the time, but from what I learned from that later. Because I had also youth on my side. So I was still young enough where, okay, I could recoup it. I had clients in their 60s who lose everything. Harder. Multi-millionaires ending up in basement apartments, relationships, marriages broken up. Like that's a different experience. But we all know of people that have lost everything and rebounded back with the right mindset and the belief in yourself. Yeah. So what we like to teach and help people understand is like if we get clear on what we want, build the belief because we all have evidence that we have success in our life. So we our patterns and success show us the path, but we have to be aware of them. Look at those, believe that anything is possible. You're not going to know how to do it. You never know. Or so you know how to do it, you'd already have it. <laughs> yeah, yes. Right? It's so it's a new journey, but it's a journey and it's a process and we decided we're going to be successful. So you show up with that, that confidence. That's what led me out of what I was doing in my previous life to transition and create this new identity as a coach. I've always coached people. Yeah, hundred percent. I've always led people. Since I was a kid playing hockey, I was always a captain or assistant captain on the team. 
Yeah. And those are the patterns. You see them, you see them, but you have to slow down and look at them. Yeah, but sometimes, like you said, it's the programming, it's the fear, whether the program is right or wrong. It's our programming. And and people fight for their programming. Like, yeah. look at the world, right? We fight for a thought, belief that probably isn't even ours. Yeah. That causes a shift. So when you wake up and have this awareness that, okay, is this what I want? That is the beginning of the next evolution of whatever it might be. Powerful question. Oh, what do I want and who am I? <laughs> uh, that, yeah. That's another <laughs> inside podcast. Another, another podcast. We're gonna monkey yeah. down for a week. Yeah, uh, Tim, yeah. thank you so much. I My appreciate pleasure. you so much My for pleasure. coming over. Thank you, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And again, I would love to thank you for coming here. This was an awesome video. Thank, thank you. you so much. Cheers. Cheers.